Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you lovely lot today? Well, as this month is official November, well, it's not really, it's just something that Margot made up for the Facebook group. But anyway, I thought we'd paint something very mauvey and purpley. So we're gonna have a go at this lovely little rainy wet street scene. And it is something pretty topical because here in the UK, it has been absolutely raining very heavily. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Okay, before we start, a quick lesson on mixing purples and mauves. Now, if you're using a convenience colour like a dioxidine purple, then really all a mauve is is a light purple. So by simply adding more water to each mix, you'll get a softer, more subtle mauve. Now, if we're mixing our purple, we all know that it's made up of our two primaries, blue and red but it's important that you use a warm leaning blue like ultramarine as it already has a small amount of red in it. Equally, your red should be a cool leaning red like alizarin crimson or in this case a magenta as it already leans towards the blue. And these watered down will make lovely soft mauves as they are basically a mix of only two of our primaries. But let's try mixing this time using a warm red, like pyrrole red for instance, and then mixing it with a cool blue, say phthalo blue or even Prussian blue, both of which lean slightly towards the yellow. Then that third primary, the yellow, will neutralize the colors, sending it into a much duller gray-like mauve. It's a lovely color in itself, but not really a strong purple or mauve. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Arsh Rough, 100% cotton. It's on a block, so it won't need stretching, but of course, any decent watercolor paper will do. Now, just five colors today, dioxidine purple, French ultramarine, magenta, cadmium orange, and Payne's gray. My brushes, I'm using a large Harke, and from my range, a three quarter inch flat, a number 12 and number six round. So here is the original reference photo, which I got from Pixabay, but with a little bit of Photoshop wizardry. Now I've made it into a square format, saturated the colors a bit and added that extra purple. Here is the pencil sketch. Now the buildings are all a bit vague, but it's important you get the figures fairly accurate. So there is a free downloadable drawing available from my website, link in the description below. Off we go. Using my large Harke brush, I'm totally wetting the whole sheet of paper. Then straight away using my three quarter inch flat, I'm dropping in some cadmium orange in quick broad vertical stripes, all done wet in wet. And here just a little touch of magenta. Next in this sky area here, now this is quite a pinky mauve, but I'm also dropping in some of the straight purple color. Let's just call it purple from now on. The dioxidine bit's all a bit too complicated to keep saying. Next, I'm tilting my paper to nearly vertical, letting the wet paint streak down the paper. Next, I'm just drawing off my brush to lift out the color within the umbrellas here. So next, this is much more of a bluey purple and I'm just painting in some blobby shapes to suggest some distant trees. And 
then just building up these simple shapes and because the paper's still wet I'm getting these lovely soft edges. So always let it dry naturally first and then you can speed up the process using a hairdryer. Now, when this is bone dry, I'm gently re-wetting the paper. And this time I'm tilting my paper first and adding in all the same colours for this second set of washes or glazes, but still transparent enough to see all the original colours below. Now, I know I haven't painted the figures yet, but while the paper is still wet, I'm dropping in their reflection with a strong creamy consistency of Payne's Grey. Again, keep the paper tilted to get that movement in the paint. Now, I will tell you that I used this demo with my local watercolour classes last week, and they did find it quite difficult. But I think what's important more than ever this week is not to worry if your version looks nothing like mine. It never will. I painted this three times this week and they all were totally different. So just have fun with this and simply use it as an experiment and a learning exercise. So the plan here really is to keep these buildings looking fuzzy and out of focus, all helping to create that feel of a wet day. So now it's time to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break. And what about a glass of Whitney Neal Palmer Violet Gin? OK, so now we're going to work on some of the details in the buildings, but I still want them to be soft and undefined. So I'm going to re-wet without saturating the paper. Now, I find one of these gardener's spray bottles perfect for the job, as they spray thousands of tiny water droplets, rather than those smaller atomizers, which just give you a very wet mist. So just five or six quick sprays should do it. So when you paint, you should get a fairly defined mark, but with a slight soft edge. And of course, before it has time to dry, you can always go back in with a little more spray. So when you look at the original, these are very much just abstract shapes. Just the mere suggestion of windows and doors and just stuff.
and tilting again to get some movement in the paint. Just lifting out here with a damp brush. Now I'm using my number six brush for a little more detail. And even a bit of splattering, but only on this side. Again, let this totally dry. Then, with my smaller number six brush, I'm lifting out a few highlights. Now you have to work quite a bit at this, back and forth and then dab out with a tissue. And what's good is you get a nice soft edge. It's very much like that uh, bokeh effect you get with photography. So this subtle line on the pavement is quite important as it helps to give that feeling of perspective and draws your eye towards the figures. Okay, so these highlights are great, but I don't think they work so well in white, so I'm carefully painting them with a very watery orange. So this area here needs something, so those ripples in the wet road are a must. So a light spray again and a very watery mix as I definitely want to see the original wash through. Okay, so now for the figures, and let's start with the umbrellas. And I'm wetting with clean water using my number six brush. Now in the original, the umbrella is black, but I thought it would be nice to bring in some more of that purple. You know, I think this whole Movember thing could become a real international event. Now, we could all wear mauve and purple clothes for a month, 
colour our hair like Dame Edna Everidge, and then not spray all our cars in mauve. Sorry, I think I got a bit carried away there. Back to the tutorial. So, with the umbrella just getting a darker value towards the bottom, and blending the top to get that sense of light. Now, you can paint these umbrellas any colours you like, but it's nice to keep them in balance with the rest of the painting. For example, I think a green umbrella would just spoil the effect. Right, so now for the legs, and both figures are wearing blue jeans. So start with the blue, then drop in wet and wet some dark value Payne's grey. And again, both figures' right leg is in shadow, so I'm painting them in a solid Payne's grey. Make sure his, I think it's a he, his left leg is dry before painting in the shadow side. And just adding in a little more detail here in the reflection. Right, a nice dark value here for the underside of the umbrella. Okay, so for both jackets I'm using a very watered down wash off the Payne's Grey. Still using my number 6 brush. Then, when that's totally dry, I'm coming back in with the Payne's Grey and just painting the shadow side, leaving the lighter grey highlights. And I think we'll add a backpack on both of the figures.
Now I think the contrast between the two greys is a little bit much so I'm just going to knock back the lighter grey with a light wash. Okay, so I'm quite happy with it as it is, but I'm still feeling the background is a little pale and hasn't got the depth and colour of the photo. Now, I know I'm in danger of ruining it, but sometimes you've got to be brave. So let's go for it. So, gently re-wetting again and layering all those same colours. What's the worst that can happen other than wasting a sheet of paper? How about a few sound effects? Lifting out the highlights again with the tissue. And a little bit of splattering. Now I need to make this look like as if it's a wall just in front. Okay, so now with some final details with a white pastel pencil. here in the window it's important to soften by lightly rubbing with your finger. There we go, all done in about three hours. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Remember, just treat it as a practice exercise and make it your own. You don't have to paint a masterpiece every time. And don't forget, if you're interested in any of our retreats, workshops or holidays, please have a look at the link below in the description. And as always, please don't forget to like.
subscribe if you haven't already it is free leave a comment i do read every single one although i can't always reply to them all world's slowest typist and of course i look forward to seeing you all again next week for another watercolor wednesday so take care now everyone bye for now